Today I'm going to talk to you at length about AI and not just about the good things that are happening or even the bad things that are happening. Yes, there is good, there is bad, but there's also ugly. And the ugly aspects of AI could be really scary. How scary? extinction of the human species level scary. So today we're going to be joined by international experts as well and we're going to be talking about the good, the bad and the ugly of AI. Now the good part of AI is relatively clear and obvious after a long period of slow improvement Chat GPT was launched in December last year and in just two months more than a hundred million people are using it. People are starting to understand the true power of AI and how it can transform our lives. Hey, it's going to make my job so much simpler. I can work so much faster. I can write code with it. I can write code in half the time. Our lives are going to become easier. And all of this has come to the fore in the last two months. That's the good part of AI and we are starting to see the possibilities of that more than ever before. Now what's the bad? Well, there are concerns about job losses. There are concerns about the Indian IT sector, for example. What's going to happen to coders? Are all those people sitting and coding, are they going to lose their jobs if AI is going to be able to code instead of all of them? What happens to white collar workers in general? Quite frankly, it has to be said that every time new technology has come up, people have come and said exactly that. Oh my God, everyone's going to lose their jobs. We heard it with, with factories. We heard it with tractors. We heard it with computers. We heard it with the internet. We heard it with mobile phones. Every time a new technology comes, people say people are going to lose their jobs. And so far it hasn't happened. So therefore, that aspect of the bad has to be looked at and we have to think it through. But now, I really want to talk to you a little bit about the ugly. Because the ugly is where things could get really scary. How scary? I'm talking about existential scary, Skynet scary, the end of humanity scary, the wiping out of the human race scary. Not 100 years from now, not 200 years from now, but potentially 10, 15, 20 years from now. Now before I completely freak you out, I have to tell you the probability is still very, very low. But it's a non-trivial possibility, which means it does exist. And because it's a non-trivial possibility and we are talking about potential human extinction, we need to pay some attention and think about it. And that's why the warning signals aren't just coming from journalism who are used to painting scary pictures. Elon Musk, a number of prominent thinkers are there saying, guys, you need to be a little careful. You're going to be looking at me right now and saying, what on earth are you talking about? This is some cute chatbot sitting and writing poems and helping me with coding and doing my homework for me and we are, we are chatting with each other and you're talking about human extinction. You've really lost it, Vikram. You've completely lost it. Now, I get it. I get where that comes from. And that's the way people are by and large viewing AI at the moment. But let's remember one thing. AI progress is on an exponential path of change and that means it's accelerating. It's becoming better and better at a faster and faster pace. What will its capabilities be then? What could it do for all of us? What could it do to all of us? That's the big question we've got to start addressing right from now. And that's why I'm going to introduce three terms to you. And those three terms are ANI, AGI and ASI. Now, what are these three? ANI is artificial narrow intelligence, and that's what all of us are used to dealing with when you talk about AI every day. Siri, ANI, Google Maps, ANI. All of this is artificial narrow intelligence. Artificial intelligence systems that do one thing, they can do them really well, but they're not capable of general thinking. They don't just sit and think about or teach themselves stuff about the rest of the world. So Google Maps, for example, would help you to get from point A to point B but it's not going to help you figure out your shopping list or how to bring up your kids. So for that, you need something like artificial general intelligence. Now, AGI is the sort of intelligence that we as humans have, which means we can figure things out. We can learn. We can teach ourselves how to learn. You may not know how to speak German or French, but you know how to pick it up. All humans are capable of general intelligence. We can learn about the world around us. So far, the question with chat GPT and some of these models is, are they now drifting towards general intelligence, which has not existed with artificial intelligence so far? Actually, if you talk to the experts, most of them are going to tell you that even now, 
chat GPT or Bing chat or whatever scary things we're hearing, these are just language models. It's like autocomplete on steroids. They're looking at a bunch of data and deciding how to finish sentences. It is not yet AGI. Point taken. I accept that. And it's good to know in a sense that we are not yet at the level of general intelligence. Why is that good to know? Because there's an entire body of science which says when you get to AGI level, to artificial general intelligence levels, when you have artificial intelligence that can think for itself and teach itself to become better and better in a more generalized way, that's when the really scary option comes up. The ugly option comes up. And the scary possibility is something called ASI or artificial super intelligence. You know, so far, I have to say that AI has been, by and large, really dumb. And that's really been the way so far. It's not, it's not actually that intelligent. It doesn't even have the IQ of an ant or a snail. That's been AI so far. And we seem to believe that, hey, it's really great. AI is improving so fast and it's going to come up to a level where it will help us. It'll be like a pet for us. And then maybe someday it'll get to human levels and it'll stop there. And if it stops there at human intelligence levels, there's no real reason for us to worry about it because, hey, we've got 8 billion, 9 billion humans in the world. And now you've got AI, which is also at human level intelligence. That's fine. We can deal with it. But... There is no reason why that must necessarily happen.